Good morning, good morning, family and friends of Greater Fellowship. I'm Nita. I'm Delina. And, and we're, we're your virtual host. host. Well, we are so glad to have you here this morning. We welcome you to the ship virtual. We're excited for another week. Amen. Welcome to the ship virtual. (laughs) I'm excited for another week, another opportunity to get it right. Amen. Amen. You know, I just feel very grateful um, that that song has been in my spirit. Gratefulness is flowing through my heart. And, you know, with all the things that have gone on in the last couple of weeks in the world, it's been been rough, but it makes you take stock of your life and say, you know what? I need to be grateful for being alive. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I didn't have to wake up this morning. Amen. You didn't have to wake up this morning, but you're here. And we are so glad that you have decided to spend your morning, Sunday morning, with greater fellowship. And we know you're going to get a blessing this morning. Amen. 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 Right now, we're going to go into a word of prayer before we go into our worship service. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness, your mercies. We thank you for how you have watched over us and kept us, Lord. We thank you for, and we're grateful for all that you have done for us and even the things that you're doing that we don't see. Father, we ask that you would continue to touch your people, Lord God. Touch those that are in mourning, Lord God. Give them the comfort that they need, Father. We ask that you would have your way in the service this day. Touch everyone that is hearing this broadcast today, Lord God. We ask that you would touch every family member, every church member, Father God, every friend. We ask that you would just have your way and let your word come forth, Lord God, that it would touch somebody's life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm ready to worship God because, like I said, I am grateful for being alive. I'm grateful for just another day to even praise God yeah. for all that he has done for me. Absolutely. Amen. 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 So right now we get your hearts and your minds ready and let's lift God up because he is worthy to be praised. David said, I will bless the Lord at, at all, all times, times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Get ready to give God some praise. Let's do it one more time. Hallelujah. 
We sing all hail. All hail King Jesus. He gets the glory. He gets the honor. Let's go back to the top. We sing the praises for he is. We sing the praises. We sing the praises for he is. We sing the praises. Come on. Let's give him the glory for he is. Give him the glory for he is. Fellowship family, welcome back. Yes, welcome back. So one of my favorite parts of our service is when we get an opportunity to welcome our first time guest. Yes. If this is your first time with us, we want you to take a minute, go into the chat box below, chat box, text box, the little box below, and put in there that you are our first time guest. We want to shout 
and say, welcome to you. We are so happy that you chose to come and hang out with us today and get a good old word. We're going to give you a gift Amen. that you can just keep on unwrapping and sharing with others. So first time guests, put in the box below that it is your first time visiting with us. We want to, again, we just want to love on you and thank you and um, hope that you enjoy this service today. I Amen. know you will. Yeah. Amen. Welcome, first time guests. We appreciate you because you're present is powerful in our eyes. Amen. Amen. And we also want to thank God for our returning guests. Yeah. We thank God for you. Keep keep coming back. You keep coming back for more. And we thank God for your presence. And we, we hope that you keep coming back. So in that text box, make sure you write down, I'm back. Type, I'm back. And we want to also show you some love and, and appreciation for coming back to join us at the ship. Right. And in addition to that, we do want to send you a little something just to say thank you. So we're asking that you text us. No, get out your little digital phone, you know, the little device with the numbers on it and call us. I'm sorry. Text us at 704-741-1616. And we want you to put guest in there. G-U-E-S-T. I'll say that one more time for you. It's 704-741-1616. 1616 and you're going to text us at guest okay <laughs> oh yeah and birthdays right you can't forget birthdays i don't know how i was about to just like totally just move right on through birthdays that's like your second Sheesh. favorite thing i know it I is know. so birthdays we got to celebrate our birthdays yes. right so if Happy today's your birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> Or this week you're celebrating your birthday. Yeah. Let us know. We want to say happy birthday to you. And we hope that you have a very safe birthday. And that you remember to just take a moment and celebrate you. Amen. Lord, you got to take care of you first before you could do anything for anybody else. Yeah. So today is your day. Or this week at some point was your day. So let's celebrate your birthday. Happy birthday. I felt like Oprah in that moment. I know, right? Okay. But <laughs> you get a birthday. You get a birthday. Hey. We all get a birthday. <laughs> anniversaries. Those couples that are celebrating anniversaries today or this week, we want you to put in the comment section when you got married and how long you've been married. We want to say happy anniversary and we wish you many, many years um, of blessings and we're glad and thankful for your union that God has brought you together and we just pray that you continue to have just more years Absolutely. in your union. Amen. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Now at this time what we, we, get, we get ready to get some word, okay? Oh, I'm ready. Let me go and kick my shoes off now. Yeah, come honey. on, I'm get ready. ready. Get your minds and hearts ready. Get your Bibles. Get Whether that's on your phone or your paper Bible, get your tablets, get your pen and paper and get ready to take notes because you're going to get a word to take you into the week. Amen. Amen. So get your minds ready to receive the word of God. Bow down and worship him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Word. Bow down, Bow down and, 
and worship him. Enter in. Worship the Lord. Worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Bow down, bow down, and worship Him. Enter in.
Shall we pray? God, we thank you for this moment that we can dig into your word to understand your will and your way for our lives. May the words of our mouths and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and redeemer. And everybody shouted amen. Amen and amen. Grab your Bibles and turn with us to Exodus chapter 16. Is where we're going to hang our hermeneutical hat this morning. Exodus chapter 16. I'm going to read one verse in your hearing just to give us some context for our discussion. And that's going to be verse 35. Exodus chapter 16, verse 35. It will make sense as we go. Verse 35. And the children of Israel ate manna 40 years until they came to an inhabited land, they ate manna until they came to the borders of the land of Canaan. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. This morning for the time that is ours to share, I want to talk from the subject, God is good. <laughs> Simply, God is good. Type that in the comment section if you believe it. And if you don't, by the end of this sermon, I hope you do. God is good. I start at the end of the chapter to give you how the scene and the story somewhat concludes. And every now and then, there is hope in seeing the ending before you read the beginning. There are some readers, novels and stories who peek at the end of the story just to see how it's going to end. Some people can't take the anticipation and do not have the patience to wait long enough just to see how the story plays out. And I will admit I will give in to the the feeling and notion of wanting to know how it ends. And today I've told you and showed you how it ends. For 40 years, Israel ate manna until they got to the land of Canaan. Our story is about a group of people who were blessed to have God on their side. A story is about a group of people who God had affection for. A story is about a group of people who God loved. And in our story, these people were the apple of God's eye. And all God simply wanted to do was to get them to know him. It is, in essence, what God has done for every child that he has. He simply engages them in a manner that has a result for them knowing him. And as I cut across the field a little bit, I want to say to you that the situations and circumstances that fall upon your life. Here's the theology I need you to have. It's happening because God wants me to know him. I'm dealing with this dilemma because God wants me to know him. I'm dealing with these issues because God wants me to know him. I'm dealing with these troubles because God wants me to know him. 
And I need you to begin to frame your life in this character. That the stuff that happens to you and the way that it happened, it is simply because God wants you to know him. In essence, our story today is that in a nutshell. God is simply wanting the people to know who he is. And, and this text, this, this text, this body of work in Exodus in chapter 16 shows us that God at times uses our circumstances, whether good or bad, for the benefit of our knowledge of him. And our brothers and sisters in the Bible here, in this passage, are struggling. They just got out of Egypt. They just left captivity, and now they're in the wilderness. As a matter of fact, just a chapter over, you see them, or a chapter or two over, you see the, the incident at the Red Sea where they're up against the Red Sea, and behind them is an army waiting to capture or kill them. The Bible says that they walk through on dry land, uh, but on the Red Sea, through the Red Sea, and, and made it to the other side. And now they're in the wilderness. And the Bible says that God did this for them. God moved them from pain and pressure to promise and promotion. And God moved them, but the move didn't feel good the whole time. I'm getting ready to come down somebody's lane today. The truth of the matter is, is that some moves that God moves in our lives doesn't feel good. Now, I need you to understand something. God has an assignment or an objective in his engagement in your life. He wants you to know him. And I believe that this this chapter, this passage shows to us today that God is good. I'm going to submit to you today because I've read the story and I know my story. And I want to use this story to prove to you so that you know God is good. The text proves it, and I, and I have three proofs that will allow me and you to know that God is good. The first, the first principle that I think is it's packed in this pericope is, number one, that God is good because he gives, write this down, when we're grumbling. He gives when we're grumbling. Verse 2 says that when the whole congregation and the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness and God heard their complaints and decided to give them something in response to their complaints. And, and I want you to read it. Read verses 2, verses 2 and following um, down to verse, verse, verse 8. God decided, he said to them, he says, I hear your grumbling. I hear your complaining. I hear your moaning. I hear your groaning. And because I hear what I hear in your grumblings, I'm still going to give you something. Now, child of God, I don't know if that will make you shout, but I know that proves that God is good. Because when, when we think about the reality of people who are complaining and grumbling, our natural human response is to not give them nothing. Oh, you got, you want to complain or you, you want to grumble or you know, come on parents, let's talk. If our children were complaining and our children were grumbling, our, our first response is not to give them what they're complaining about, but to withhold that which they are complaining, but because God is good. <laughs> Oh, I'm happy already. Because God is good, he gives when we're grumbling. And I don't know about you, but I done grumbled a few times. It still got some gifts from God. And every now and then, I know somebody can testify that you've grumbled at some stuff, but God still showed you how good he was. It is to the children of Israel that God hears their grumbling and responds with gifts. 
And I like that God will respond through our grumblings with gifts and give us exactly what we need. He provides for the children of Israel the manna that they need. Now, let me push it a little bit further and, and show you. This is not the first time that they have grumbled. If you read a little bit earlier and if you find in, in, uh, in, the, in the previous chapter, in chapter 15, they were grumbling about water. They were grumbling about water in chapter 15. And when they grumbled about water, Moses and Aaron fixed the problem because God responded to their grumbling. Now here in chapter 16, they're grumbling again. They're grumbling about food. They're grumbling about eating. They're grumbling about how they're going to get sustenance for their body. They're in the wilderness. There's no stores. There, there's no food lions. There are no Kroger's. There are, there, there are no Walmarts and no super targets. There, there are no stores out there in the wilderness. The only way that they can get any food for themselves is by the hand, oh, let me say it this way, by the goodness of God. <laughs> and the goodness of God still comes when we're grumbling. That's the good news that I want to share with you today, that even when we're grumbling, God's still good. Even when we're complaining, God still is compassionate. Even when we're still, when we're mumbling, God is still merciful. God is a good God, despite how bad we may be. And I can test, I can testify for myself. I don't need no help with this. I've been bad in my life. I've done some things I shouldn't have done. I I've said some things I shouldn't have said, but God, who was merciful and good, still provided my needs. He gives when we're grumbling. God gives to the children of Israel, even though they're complaining. Now, hear me, child of God. This is not a license to complain more. Because I dare say, not every complaint gets a response of a good gift. Because in Numbers chapter 21, when the children of Israel complained, the response that God gave was snakes. So, so, so be careful. Be careful to believe that the key to your success with God is complaining. Oh God, I, I'm losing people here. What God is sharing with us is, because here's the context of the text. The reality of this is God wants them to know who God is. And if you look at the, the scope of it, this is the beginning of their relationship with God. See, see, when you move over to that other text I was talking about, that was later in their relationship. They should have known by then. But this, this passage of scripture is at the beginning of their relationship with God. And so by being at the beginning of their relationship with God, there's a different leniency from God. Lean in, child of God. I, I, I got to tell you this. Lean in. The, the, the God, God is making sure you know him when he deals with you. This is the beginning of their ministry. This is the beginning of their walk with God. They're, they're, get, they're getting ready to spend 40 years on this journey. They're getting ready to spend 40 years uh, in this mix. But this is a passage at the beginning. So be careful how you read it. Not only do we see that God gives when we're grumbling. We see that these people begin to complain about Moses and error. Now, I'm not going to make no friends right along through here, but I didn't come to make friends. I came, came to help you see Jesus. That the Bible says that the people were complaining against Moses and Aaron. And it had to be cleared up. And Moses, when you read the story this week for your devotion, you'll read the story and you'll see that Moses had to clear, Moses and Aaron had to clear it up because they even mentioned this two different times that, that you complain. What does it mean for you to complain against us? The, Moses and Aaron said, we ain't do this. <laughs> okay, that went over the head. Moses said, this ain't what we wanted either. 
This is not our doing. This is not our vision. This is not our call. This is not our mission. We're on assignment from God. But what, what the Moses and Aaron says, it said, they said, whenever you complain against us because we're on assignment from God, we are, you are complaining against God. And we are not going to stand for you complaining against God. You can talk about us if you want, but you ain't going to talk about God. You can talk about me all you want, but you're not going to talk about God. That's what Moses said. You can talk about God, um, Aaron, all you want, but you're not going to talk about God. But in the event you talk about us, you're still talking about God. And I just come out to share with you that you ought to be careful who you put your mouth on. I wish I could hide myself. You ought to be careful who you complain about. Because you might be complaining about somebody from the Lord. <laughs> oh, God. Your, your complaints might be valid, but they still might be against somebody who God put in your life. Come on, child of God. Child of God, they're complaining against Moses and Aaron. And Aaron makes it clear. When you talk about us, you talk about him because we're on assignment from God. But yet and still, God is good because he gives when we're grumbling. Not only, not only does God give when we're grumbling, but God is good, number two, because he supplies when we're short. He supplies, write it down. He supplies when we're short. Verse 18, verse 18 says, so when they measured it by own words, he who gathered much had nothing left over. And he who ga gathered little had no lack. Every man had gathered according to each one's needs. Do you see that? Listen, he supplies even when we're short. It is the needs of those that he supplies. Now, let me, let me, let me fill in the gaps. God hears the grumbling, responds to the grumbling, but says, all right, here's what I'm going to do. In the evening, I'm going to send some quail, some bird. But you got to eat what you can eat. Grab what you can grab, eat what you can have right there. But in the morning, I'm going to send some bread. So when you wake up in the morning, it'd be under the dew. When the dew rises off of, 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 of the bread, off the surface of the ground, you'll see the bread from heaven. Bread of heaven will fall down every morning. But here's the thing. You've got to eat that in the morning. There are, yeah, there are no doggy bags here. There's no leftovers uh, uh, here. Uh, you got to eat all of this. Uh, whatever you need to eat, eat it in the morning and don't take anything left over. And, and God was very clear. God said, I need you to take what you need, eat enough and eat in the evening and eat in the morning. And that's all you need to do. And what he does is he supplies their needs. Now, I, I, I don't... I. I know some people have a life where they have over an abundance, where you can go in your closet and you got six, 600 pair of shoes and you can, you can wear a different outfit every hour of the day all week and still not wear the same clothes. I know many of us have an overabundance and I ain't, I'm not pointing any fingers because whenever you point one, three pointing it back at you. I'm simply making a point here. The point that I'm trying to make here is that what God gives will always be enough for you to live. The goodness of God is in the reality that you have enough for now. God, God, listen, listen, hear me, hear me. This passage, this passage teaches us that God is in the business of giving us enough for now. And I'm finna come down, I'm finna come down a lane right here. Too many of us are complaining to God because he's not giving us enough for later. If I hit you, I didn't mean to miss you. You just got in my way this morning. God is the God of enough now. 
And God will give you enough to sustain you through this season that you're in. And I need somebody to understand that and know that child of God. God's going to give you enough. God's going to give you enough to make it. God's going. Oh, God, I feel it. Woo, I thank you, Jesus. God's going to give you enough to make it over. God's going to give you enough to get through it. God's going to give you enough to, 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 to see the next day. God is going to give you enough because he's good and he's the God of enough now. This passage, this passage shows us that God is the God of enough for right now. And every now and then God don't want you to want, doesn't want you to have extra. He wants you to just simply have essential. And too many of us, too many of us are complaining that we don't have extra. And I know you're looking at Instagram and you, you're looking at Facebook and you're watching everybody's lifestyle and you're seeing what they got, but you don't know where they are in the story. They may be in the wilderness in their 23rd year. You're just in your first year. And you got to make sure that you understand, that you understand the engagement that God has for you. He's wanting you to know who he is. Somebody type God is good. Type God is good. Woo! God is good. He'll give you enough for now. Now, child of God, he's giving them enough for now. But here it is. And, 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 and I know somebody, yes, you or you, somebody out there is upset with God for the stuff he's already given you. I wish I could run away. I can't. I'm going to look dead in your face. Some of you are ungrateful for what God has already given you. I, I told you I ain't come to make no friends today. And you ought to repent right now for being, for being grossly ungrateful for whatever God has already given you. And maybe, just maybe, the reason why you're only with the essential, oh God, I don't want to say it, Lord. Okay, I, do, do I have to? Okay. Maybe, just maybe, I, I, I'm on the side. Maybe, just maybe, why you don't have, why you only have essential and don't have extra is because you're not grateful for the essential. Oh, that ain't my word, that's his. Maybe, just maybe, you don't recognize how good he is in the little that you got. Maybe, just maybe, you don't recognize how blessed you are with the little that you have. Just enough for today. God, and I need you to say, God, I will bless your name if you just give me enough for today. I will honor your name. I will glorify your name if you just give me enough for today. I ain't worried about tomorrow. I'm just trying to get through today. I ain't worried about next week. I'm trying to get through today. And the God we serve is able to get us through today. God, he is good. And he's good. And he'll supply us when we're short. When there's a need, God will provide. When there's an answer you need, God will provide. When there's a door you need, God will provide. When there's a way you need, ha, God will provide. Woo! Is there anybody, oh God, I can't. Is there anybody out there in, in, in TV, in Facebook, and YouTube land that will testify, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, that God is good. I got to quit because I done messed around and got happy up in here. God is good. He gives when we're grumbling. He supplies when we're short. And the Bible says that they had to collect enough for that morning, enough for that evening, and they couldn't take any leftovers. But lastly, God is good because here it is. Number three, he protects our peace. Please write it down. He protects our peace. Verse 23 says, then he said to them, Moses, this is what 
The Lord has said, here's what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today and boil what you will boil and lay up for yourselves all that remains to be kept until morning. Okay. I know I'm going to get happy right now. I can feel it. I feel the happiness come right up here. He, he protect, type it down. He protects our peace. See what God, it, 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 verse 23 says, and the Lord said that the Sabbath is holy. The Sabbath is rest. Rest is a point in your path that is peaceful. What God is doing is saying, I don't need every day to be a work day. What I need for you to do is to build into your life a place of peace. And, and what I need you to do is build into your life a place of rest. And, and you can't work every day, all day, all the time. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can't work all the time without getting some rest. Because if you don't get rest, you won't have no peace. And what God does, I feel it here. What God does is he builds a blessing that protects your peace. I need you to write that down. God will build you a blessing that will protect your peace. As a matter of fact, every blessing from God has a protection clause for peace. There will never be anything from God that will take away your peace. There will never be a place that God sends you that will remove your peace. There will never be somebody that God puts in your life that take away your peace. There will never be a job that God puts you on that takes away your peace. And in the event that it is taking away your peace, it is not God's plan. Okay, y'all don't believe me. You looking at me funny. Why are you looking at me like that? Go back to Genesis. Since you want to look at me like that. Genesis, God created the heavens and the earth. He went day one, he created light. Day two, he created the atmosphere. Day three, he created the ground. Day four, he created the sun, moon, and stars. Day five, he created the, 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 the birds of the air and the sea creatures. Day six, he created animals and humans. And on day seven, he rested. Okay, they missed it. Day one, he created light. Day two, he created the atmosphere. Day three, he created the trees. Day four, he created the sun, moon, and stars. Day five, he created the atmosphere, the air, the uh, sea creatures and the air creatures. And day six, he created man and animals. On day seven, he rested. God, even in his own creation, built peace in the plan. Now, child of God, if God took some peace, whew, Lord have mercy. If God created a space for him to have some peace, uh, if God created it for himself, then you ought to create it for yourself. I, I got to quit. He, he always gives us things that has peace in the plan. Now, day one through six, they were never to take leftovers. If they took leftovers, and the Bible says, when you read it, you'll see that some of them kept extra. But the Bible says that the worms came and destroyed it. God, I feel it. But when on the sixth day, oh God, when they took extra, because the way God set the blessing up, he set the blessing up that on the sixth day, the stuff that went bad on day one through five lasted overnight. Oh, God. So he set the blessing so that the same stuff that would get worms in it in one set season would not get worms in another. He set it up so that stuff that got worms on it yesterday won't get worms on it today. That's why you got to follow the plan that God has for you because some stuff got worms on it because, it, oh God, it ain't in God's plan for you to keep it. I'm preaching too hard for a first Sunday. I'm done. I'm done. Let me quit. I'm going to quit. 
He puts a plan together to protect their peace. He says, I need you to keep this day holy. I need you to keep this Sabbath sacred. And child of God, here's what I'm telling you. Come here. Come here. You can't work every day. You got to have at least one day where your peace is protected. You got to have one day where you can calm yourself and, and rejuvenate yourself and look back over the work you've already done. You will never, ever have peace if you're always going and going and going. Take some time because God's plan has it. And I'm done. God is good. I, I just I just simply came by here to tell you that God is good. And I know he's good because when I read Exodus chapter 16, we see that he gives even when we're grumbling. In Exodus chapter 16, I know God is good because I see that he supplies even when we're short. I see that God is good in Exodus chapter 16 because I see that he, he builds a plan that protects our peace. And everything that God does for you, depending on the season where you are, he's trying to get you to know who he is. And God is good all the time, no matter how bad it is. God is good, no matter what you're dealing with. God is good, no matter what you're facing. God is good, no matter what you're going through. Well, I have to bid you adieu this morning. It's been real great being with you today. Greater fellowship, good morning to you and may the Lord bless you real good but on my way out of here the clock on the wall says that's all <laughs> the watch on my wrist says that's it but the God in my heart asked me to ask you this part ain't he all right that's all I need to know will you answer the question ain't he all right ain't God good ain't he all right ain't God good won't he make a way for you won't he open doors for you won't he provide bread in a place where there's no grocery store won't he give you water when you're thirsty. Hmm. Won't he give you a friend when you're friendless? Yes! Ain't he all right? If he's all right, say yes. If he's all right, say yes. Yes! Ain't he good? God is good. I know he's good. How good do you know he is? She is. Because one Friday, it was a Friday that they took my Jesus. They whipped him all day. He died. Ooh, he died. He stayed dead Saturday. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. Why? Because God, 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 God is good. He's good. I know he's good. I know he's good. Say yes. 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 Yes, he's good. Yes, he's good. He's good in the morning. He's good in the afternoon. <laughs> he's good in the evening. He's good when I'm bad. Yes, yes. Ah, yes. Woo. He's good. Ha, ah, he's good. Ha, ah, ha, ah, he's good. Yes. Right, greater fellowship. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but I know I heard a word. Heard a word. I heard a word, and it wasn't just any word. It was a good word. Oh, amen. It amen. was a good word. Amen. So listen, 
you got to tell us about what touched your heart mm -hmm. in the word today. What has, what has inspired you today to go out and just be an amazing person of God? Mm -hmm. Who are you going to go out and share this word with, right? Yeah, that's right. So that's right. speaking of sharing. Speaking of sharing, we want you to share this, this broadcast with our face, with the Facebook family, with your friends. We also want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Greater Fellowship Church. And you can, you can see us on YouTube, but share this word because it, I'm sure somebody received a word and somebody needs to hear a word mm -hmm. and at this time for those that are saying you know I, I, I thank God for the word and I, there's something else that I want there's I'm searching for something more Jesus is the answer mm -hmm. and if you want to get in touch with with the church just to get more information if you want to give your life over to the Lord because he is calling for you if you want more information, we ask that you would just text the word Jesus to 704-741-1616. Again, text Jesus to 704-741-1616. And if you want to be connected to with um, Greater Fellowship, if you want to join or you just want a connection, somebody will reach out to you. We want you to also just text Jesus to the same number, 704 741 1616 and someone will even if you need a prayer someone will reach out to you to to have a word of prayer with you praise god we thank god it's been a wonderful service today amen yes, i've okay. been blessed and you know i just want to challenge everyone before we go i want to challenge everyone with all of the things that's going on and we talked about being grateful this morning yes I want you to reach out to somebody, a family member, a friend you haven't spoken to in a while and just reach out to them and let them know you appreciate them and that you love them. Let's give each other our flowers while we live Amen. and not wait until we're not here anymore. Wouldn't Amen. you rather hear it? Absolutely. Amen. Amen. So that's the challenge today. We want you to reach out to someone this week and let them know that you love them and that you appreciate them. Amen. Amen. And one thing that I always like to say, if you stay ready, you don't you have to, to get, get ready. ready. Amen. So we will see you <laughs> next week. Amen. And have before a we go, oh, okay. I love you. I love you, sis. Oh, I appreciate you. <laughs> Have God a great week. Have a blessed week.